Meteorite impacts are nature's excavators. This is a small impact crater formed about 50,000 years ago in northern Arizona, one of the best preserved on Earth. It's just over a kilometer across, about 0.7 miles. The sort of square shape is due to pre-existing fractures in the bedrock it smashed into. Rocks that were excavated in this violent event are scattered all around the site, with the biggest ones still perched on the crater rim. This is a useful feature of impact craters if you want to learn something about what rocks are below ground, like on Mars. Jezero Crater is huge compared to the one in Arizona. It's about 45 kilometers wide, about 28 miles. And it's filled with smaller craters, including this one named Dacono, which is about twice the size of Arizona's crater. There are lots of even smaller craters, including ones at the Perseverance rover site. For the first time in its mission, Perseverance has investigated an impact crater. This one is so eroded and small, about 70 meters or about 70 yards across, that you almost don't notice it. But it still has boulders excavated from below ground level, which are useful for learning something about the geology here. The white line traces out the rover's path and the dots are where it stopped for one or more sols. The red dash line is Wright Brothers Field, where the Ingenuity helicopter first took flight. We'll pick up the rover's point of view, starting at Sol 102, on approach to the crater. The mound of boulders marks the rim of the crater about 100 meters away. I'll introduce Virtual Mars Guy for scale. This set of navcam views documents the slow approach over multiple sols. This high resolution MassCan Z panorama reveals that even a small impact can throw up a lot of rocks, although these probably came from just a few meters below the surface. There's one that really pops out because it looks a bit like a face. Here's virtual Mars guy for scale. But of course, this is just another example of how just the right erosion and lighting can create illusions among the rocks on Mars. Turning back to the mound, there are some rocks that show a style of weathering that is described with a surprisingly human-oriented term, exfoliation. It's as if the rocks are shedding layers of skin, but it's some combination of physical and chemical weathering that separates the outermost surface of these rocks, causing them to flake away. The flakes can be seen littering the surroundings. I've seen very similar exfoliation among rocks known as ignimbrite deposits in the central Andes of South America. These are rocks formed from cataclysmic explosive volcanic activity and are one possibility for the rocks in Jezero. On Sol 109, Perseverance stopped at the edge of the crater where the rim is so eroded that MassCam Z could get a look inside. This little crater has been mostly filled in over eons of time accumulating small, dust-covered dunes on the floor. On Sol 110, Perseverance finally caught up to the Ingenuity helicopter after its successful seventh flight. Judging from the notably smooth terrain, it picked a good place to land. With this flight, Ingenuity has now flown more than 280 meters away from its original home field, this is a good sign that helicopters could someday be a new way to explore the surface of Mars.